Righty. Uh, good evening uh, to uh, tonight. Uh, uh, we are happy uh, to join you again for another webinar. Um, we just want you to uh, familiarize yourself with our disclaimer. We're just going to give you 10, 20 seconds just to uh, read through this, uh, if you don't mind. Um, it's uh, for us important uh, that um, you uh, understand uh, what we want to communicate tonight and uh, um, that we all start on the right foot. Alrighty, so uh, like uh, like I said, uh, it's, uh, it's a warm welcome here from uh, our offices in Centurion. It's uh, myself, Vili Ulofse, Head of Due Diligence, accompanied by uh, my colleague, uh, Michiel Lucas. He's uh, our uh, PMO, and not just that, he's also uh, part of the, the deals team and uh, making sure that uh, uh, we uh, source the, the appropriate uh, projects. Um, and uh, tonight, we're going to speak predominantly about the Lone Star State, and uh, that's going to be our main focus tonight, actually. Um, so I'm just going to roll roll by. Uh, like you see, uh, we're going to try and keep it as short and sweet as possible. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's important for us that you that you um, learn what is uh, uh, Texas and why it's uh, attracting investors' attention. So this is, this is the purpose of the webinar tonight. Um, I'm just waiting for the slide to switch over. So, so I'm just going to run by uh, what Wealth Migrate uh, uh, business overview is. So we uh, bring transparency and independent insight and accessibility to the global real estate investment market through a listed environment. Uh, we have uh, got our global investment diligence system that ensures consistency and, and safety uh, with wealth preservation as the main focus and sustainability at the end of the day. Uh, over the last three years, we have uh, concluded six commercial real estate investment projects with a value exceeding $100 million. The projects usually vary um, and, uh, for, from uh, uh, our growth uh, uh, investments at um, 18 to 36 months or our income investments that's usually four to five years holding period. Um, we try to get the investments to deliver an internal rate of return between the 12 to 19.5 percent or above if we can uh, if we can help it usually we see those those uh, those returns on our growth projects we at this stage are, are, are still paying dividends on a quarterly basis and uh, you can you can expect any anything between seven to nine percent per annum on our income investments all right uh, moving on. So what we want to what we want to cover tonight? Um, oh, sorry, uh, just a computer glitch. There we go. Uh, we want you to be be involved and participate and, and ask questions. So I don't know if anyone of you uh, um, out there actually knows what what the Lone Star State uh, uh, why it's called the Lone Star State. And for those that maybe don't know, it is actually Texas that we're talking of. Um, so yeah, so uh, if you uh, participate, uh, drop us uh, uh, the answer in the uh, in the box, and uh, I'll uh, reveal it uh, later during the course of the, the webinar. So what we want, uh, uh, what do we want to learn today? Uh, why Texas is attracting the attention of South African investors, but actually not really just South African investors. We see people from all over the world um, really coming into Texas and uh, wanting to. Um, partake in what's going on there and, and, and why is it attractive. That's, that's what we're really going to focus and talk through. Um, how to protect your wealth by investing offshore. Uh, so that's mostly for us as South Africans. Uh, we're just going to touch on that. How to take the first step to financial freedom. And that's, this, this, this is for us a very important thing is that we want to, to empower the 99% the, uh, to invest like the 1%. And that's, this is this is sort of the first stepping stone for you. How the current economic climate in South Africa affects you? We all know that uh, there's a lot of political uncertainty uh, from uh, uh, Prevan Gordon. Uh, every now and then we, we hear that he's going to lose his job. 
and other other things that uh, that is really going to impact uh, your investment and your wealth moving forward. So how how can you uh, co-invest in investment opportunities that will give you above average returns? That's sort of what, what we want to try and achieve is, is that you as an investor want to protect your, yourself uh, uh, against these uh, different aspects that you might uh, find in your uh, various countries and in particular South Africa. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hand over now to Michiel. He knows Texas quite well. He uh, he's, he's got a Lone Star tattoo on his uh, palm. Uh, and uh, but yeah, I'm gonna hand over to him to to tell you more about why he uh, loves his tattoo. Thanks, Willy. Um, I would like to share our experience as well, and I think Willy, um, I'm gonna keep it interactive with you as well. Um, you also been with me quite a few times to uh, Texas already. And uh, yeah, I think what we want to do is really um, bear down some principles um, why this is um, really happening for us um, in Texas and you know why is it so attractive and then all the questions that really has actually highlighted in terms of how to protect your investment, how does it affect you. We want to give you go through um, the, the principles uh, for that just now and um, we're going to use that as our guiding framework of, of this webinar and to see how we build it up from principles and then understand how that affects you then personally. So that's that's the idea. I think um, one of the key things I want to um, start off with, um, we found very interesting law in the states which is called the at-will state and that effectively means that um, you can scale your business by hiring and firing employees um, as the business economic need um, predicts. And why this is so important is that it creates a flexibility business environment which to the contrary public belief is actually exactly the reason why companies actually are much more um, flexible and survive actually much longer and um, a lot of us um, is used to that things are very unionized and for good reason maybe from a South African perspective but in uh, the first first world countries um, if something is unionized um, then it normally restricts business activity and, and we've seen it so clearly in the Texas and, and this will, will come through and then the other thing before I go into the other details is that there's no income state on a tax level on a state level. Uh, for those that know, the American system has got taxes um, specifically to each state and then there is an overall tax which they call the federal tax. So from that perspective, um, it means that the state tax or state income tax on um, economic activity in um, uh, Texas is pretty much not tax. So that's an important catalyst to do business. And the second thing is that um, they also, because of their central location, their harbor um, in on the south side, specifically Houston, is a very much a, almost an economic hub in terms of a transport route to the bulk of the mid United States, which means that a lot of the import activities happens through the Houston port, and as a result, there's a lot of import duties, and as a result. They could have levied those duties in Texas, but they choose a very interesting strategy is that they actually um, levy the importation taxes or custom duties at destination. That means that goods traveling through the port um, of Houston, for instance, doesn't get taxed until it actually arrives in the state where it was ordered from. And that creates a lot of activity and a lot of volume which then naturally spins off as business. And I think that is that is two or three key items which is not so obvious um, when we talk about uh, Texas. All right, so uh, really let's dive into the principles that we're going to use tonight. Um, and the principles is really um, to understand from, a, from an investment perspective, if you ask the question, how do you going to protect your investment, um, you obviously want proper returns. I assume uh, you have uh, also been looking at it uh, very specifically. And you know, a natural investor 
you know, it's pretty much two things that I want, you know. Um, my experience is pretty much growth and protection. Yeah, sure. So from that perspective, um, we want to understand, you know, where does, where's the economic hubs um, that we can invest in? So we're going to make an interesting comparison for you just now. And then once we understand where the hubs are, how is it in relationship in the actual first world country? And then one of the key principles that we have used so successfully in the past is the principle of population growth points. And um, that normally creates the demand. Um, and then the demand actually creates the need for the property. And if you are a property focused investor, then obviously that means that you get tenants. And if you get tenants, you get income and uh, the rest follows. But nothing, nothing helps if you don't have rule of law. So these are the principles. And what I want to do tonight is just explain how we use these principles um, when we evaluate um, Texas and why then Texas is so um, is so attractive. So the first slide we want to show you is that the actual economic GDP of Texas actually compares to a lot of the countries in the world. So here's a graph that we found from the IMF and it shows the top 10 countries by GDP nominal 2016. Um, uh, what is very interesting, I'm sure the, the balance between China and the United States obviously changed constantly, but the fact of the matter is that from um, India, Italy, Brazil and Canada, you can see the size of the economy in Texas actually starts comparing with actually some of the top 10 countries in the world. So that basically means that um, Texas is one of the economic hubs and drivers in the United States and uh, we've experienced it first hand. So if we um, look at the next slide here, you will see that there's a, quite a few very large companies that's relocating to um, Texas and I've specifically experienced Toyota which has moved their North American headquarters of about I think it's 40,000 uh, yeah. really, yeah. um, employees to um, this area um, just north of um, Fourth Worth. Um, it's actually on the way to Frisco. It's a suburb of Dallas. And then, um, yeah, your ex-company Morgan Chase as far as uh, yeah. JP Morgan Chase. Chase as well. Yeah. So that that's where that happened. Yeah, and I think the main reason here is, is, is just because of this economic benefit of them to do business there. Like Michael already mentioned, is, is, is the no taxes that uh, these um, businesses have to pay. You know? So, so it's, it's a, they want people to move there. They, 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 all the, the different cities have got specific innovations that they um, promote these these employees to, to, to move their businesses there to ensure that uh, uh, they get the best and attractive deal and, and it just makes sense to move your business to yeah. Texas. I think um, maybe just to give an order of magnitude, most states ask about 5 to 6 percent tax and means that um, you can save 5 to 6 percent tax on a state level um, by just moving here. So I think uh, that's the driver. And then uh, let's just have a look at uh, what happens from an overall uh, perspective in the US um, is that we want to understand, you know, where is the growth engine? So um, we've looked at it very specifically in these areas and um, as you can see um, down here southwest area, 12.7% of the GDP is actually this area and then Texas, the state over here, is actually um, in real terms 9.5% of the US economy. So that state alone is like a ginormous uh, percentage. Very interesting, you can clearly see that um, the economic hub is located um, also driven by the western side, California, we think of Silicon Valley, we think of Hollywood, and all of these things. And then um, very specifically um, here driven by the New York, um, area, so a lot of financial capital, you can see it's, it's almost 18%. And then um, uh, a lot of people don't know that, but this southeast corner is also hugely driven economic port uh, or economic activities. Um, we've got a lot of investments here in Atlanta, 
Georgia. Um, we're looking very clearly now at, uh, at Florida, North Carolina. Um, really, I think North Carolina will, will talk about the cities just now. Just remember North, North Carolina, yeah? So what we can see is that um, the economic hubs are very clearly situated um, from a let's call it a growth engine perspective that Texas plays one of the dominant roles in, in these areas. So um, needless to say that if you want to protect your investment and you want to have a safe area, I think the first area that you look at is obviously where is the real economic growth and that you're not in some far forgotten corner um, and, and, and therefore just that logic is, is what we're looking at. Yeah, I think in the past, you know, you, you found that uh, it was uh, much reliant on oil, but uh, in, the, in the past, it is, uh, in, in the recent times, uh, because of this um, reliance on oil previously, there's been a, a real movement towards how to diversify the sectors and the industries, and that's also an important thing for us from that perspective is that it's not just um, uh, reliant on one sector, but also on the different sectors. Right, um, then the next thing um, that we very specific look at is like I alluded to in the beginning is um, population growth. So, you know, once we know more or less um, which, um, let's call it sector of the US we want to look at growth agents, then it's time to zoom into actual cities. And um, ever since we've been pulling these stats, um, really I think from 2014, I've did, you did a lot of work the last two years. Yeah. And it's almost without failure that um, the four or three main cities of um, Texas is always in the, in the top 20, top 15 growth engines. Um, so from our perspective, um, that basically means that um, people want to go there and uh, we've been tracking this for at least three to four years and we've seen that this is con a continuous trend. Um, so there's a lot of activity um, in, in these areas. Um, when we look at these graphs, there's always so many of them and there's so many versions of the truth that we found. But in general, I think the point that we're making is that um, um, Texas City is, is always there. And then for those that does, does not know, is Fort Worth and Dallas is virtually a big con metropole, which is actually nowadays called Dallas Fort Worth or Fort Worth Dallas, um, however you want to pronounce it. And we'll, we'll move into that just now. So, so that, that is uh, at the moment obviously a, a city that we really enjoy from a growth perspective. Um, but, but we'll get into that now. So, you know, if you have growth and you know where to go, um, the other thing is, you know, we, we also learned that things are not always as rosy as one would think. So one of the, um, one of the key th things that we need to also consider is, you know, um, which states in the United States um, have a strong um, focus on protecting your land lord rights. It's now used that um, you, you basically have investment and then you have the potential to not actually be able to enforce your rights. So what we've been doing at the moment is we've, we've seen that and this is just our view on it so there's no specific, um, we've done some specific research into the actual laws but our view at the moment is um, that we found that the strong protection for landlords are pretty much in the southeast and the southwest from a landlord protection perspective. Um, what we found is that um, in, uh, in the western part um, of the United States, specifically California, um, the eviction times and how you deal with the process of eviction um, is um, is longer process than what we would found in Texas or in the southeast corner. We have heard some horror stories in the mid-Atlantic, specifically New York, where there's actual hostile, hostile takeover of apartment buildings and um, where the landlord actually have to provide the hostile tenants alternative um, accommodation. So that sounds very familiar to, to South Africa where the tenants has a stronger rights than the landlord. So 
from that perspective is once we um, actually um, are back uh, and, and going overseas with our investments, we really want to understand that if we do investment that our rights are genuinely protected. And that's why it's so important to, to, to have a look also at where are your rights um, protected. So now that we've, we've talked about that on an economic or a, let's call it a, a US base, wide base state, I want to zoom in a little bit into Texas itself. Um, what we found is an extremely peculiar situation is that almost 70% of the population growth is in this triangle which they are calling the Texaplex. And um, you can almost say to the, let's call it to the, the western side, this country over here is quite barren. It's uh, very similar to the Karoo in, in South Africa for those that know. And there's obviously a lot of oil here up, um, I can always say where the E is, that's Midlands, that's where George Bush came from, that's a huge, huge um, oil um, deposit. Um, but what we found is that um, this triangle, which is from Dallas to Houston, to San Antonio, which is maybe not so well known to everybody, Austin, which is the capital of, um, of, of Texas, this is called the Texaplex. And the reason why this is important is that basically 70% to 80% of the growth actually happens in this part of the state, and that's why it's actually very well known um, as the Texaplex. Um, if you if you want to know a little bit more about it, um, Google um, Texaplex. There's a fantastic video on it showing that economic growth, and um, yeah, this is this is where this all is happening. The the key issue here is that they they're projecting pretty much by 2015 this this amount of population is actually going to double. So from a population growth perspective, this ticks all the boxes. And then um, from a diversification perspective, um, it's, I want to go a little bit into that now, um, is that um, from, from that perspective, we also found that um, Texas in general makes a lot of sense from a, um, let's call it affordability perspective. And the way that we measure it um, is pretty much between New York, Los Angeles, and, and, and Texas. And as you can see, the medium household income are, are pretty much the same. There's an unbelievable large population. If you look at 27.5 million in Texas versus the others, um, I have pulled here specifically New York itself, but New York State is a little bit bigger than that, but New York is so dominant that it, it's almost like a state. So that's just a comment on that. Um, also, what's interesting, the, the median age are also pretty much the same, but I think the real benefit um, comes in when you look at um, affordability. So what we've done is um, we looked at the, the, the housing here where you can see um, the, the, the property on the uh, left-hand side on your screen is the, the median property price in Texas, so that's 152,000 compared to New York, which is well over 500, and we have some figures that's even even more expensive than that. So what this basically means is that um, we've still got a good income, a large income, and but we have a, a lot of affordability. That means that large workforces can relocate to. Um, these places and because they can relocate to it, it means that they can offer their workers a uh, high income, low state taxes or zero as we alluded to and their basic needs of housing um, is much cheaper in terms of value for money than what we can find in other states. So we for instance have seen a, um, a, a, a really an upmarket um, house of about four or five bedrooms um, in Texas is about 450,000. In um, California it's pretty much about, I would say, uh, about 700,000. And in New York obviously the high rises is over a million. So um, these stats we just pulled a, a little bit and to see that it definitely um, uh, is, is value for money from, from that perspective. So, so it means that the environment for Texas is just conducive. It's a large economy. It's a, a, a popular economy. 
and um, people really want to live there. So as a result, now putting on my investor hat, um, you actually would be making a quite a safe bet if you want to go into Texas compared to other places in the United States. I'm not talking in general world terms, I'm just saying if you diversify to the United States, this is an area that you definitely have to look at. I mean, it makes just a, a quite a lot of sense. So really, I think um, that's pretty much what we were thinking about um, how to deal with uh, with these questions. So maybe let's just summarize for the investors and see uh, what did we cover and how do we see it fits into our key questions of tonight. Yeah, I think uh, the main thing is what we always are concerned about is is our, uh, is our wealth. So we want to protect our wealth by 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 investing in the diverse, strong economic hubs, and that's that's what what what, what I hope you have actually seen from this uh, presentation is that Texas has got a strong economic hub. There's a lot of factors involved in it. It's not just one industry related. It is uh, it's got it's business friendly. Um, it is innovative by uh, having the best uh, uh, various best places for startups like Dallas. Um, the the it's not just um, um, uh, a hub where, where, where you can um, make sure that you you cover everything. Um, it's um, yeah, it's not oil related. It's diversified. Yeah, diversified. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I just lost my thought, 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 uh, thinking there. Yeah. So, but, but the important thing for us is, is that, and that's the purpose of this, is that we want you to educate, educate, educate yourself, because of the fact that um, this is the, this is the um, important thing about doing investments. You need to understand what's going on, and uh, and, and and why, you know. So, like we like we mentioned for 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 for, for uh, from a due diligence perspective, when I look at a, uh, the transaction, we, I'm looking at the population growth. I'm looking at the location. I'm looking at the risk factors, you know, which 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 is combined, and that's why it's important to understand all these these things. Uh, we've not covered all these matters um, tonight, but we will definitely in the future have more uh, webinars that you can attend that we will. We'll just go deeper into what kind of risks there is. So, diversification is the key to the investment success. And what we what we uh, want to challenge you is to is, is is with the question is what if you can have three world currency destinations to invest in? And that's why we like America. We've uh, we, we we like Australia, and uh, we're looking into UK. Uh, we just Monitoring the whole Brexit scenario now, um, it's 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 now at its at its peak. So uh, we, we we're happy to um, to just to understand that um, that you can protect your if you're from a RAN perspective, uh, protect yourself against any uh, sort of African situation that that might occur. Um, I think we've uh, this week, Michael, uh, or over the weekend, uh, you mentioned about. Uh, um, uh, a report that came through. Yeah, Cyril Ramboza actually proposed um, a change to the constitution to um, to expedite or appropriate land without compensation. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what we are saying is we don't actually know, you know, what will happen in the future. But as our mentor Clem Santer always says, is um, um, get the scenarios, diversify. So from a wealth migrate perspective, we are promoting diversification. Um, we are saying invest in South Africa. We are saying invest in other first world countries in the world. And all countries also have their problems. Um, of course. I mean, America's problem is um, one of the key things is obviously the large debt that they've got. Um, we don't exactly know exactly how Trump effect is going to be. Yeah, Trump economics. In Australia, we have a huge influx of foreign investors and foreign people, so they have also a fairly large um, government debt, maybe not as large as the United States. So I think my point is that um, South Africa has got problems, the US has got problems, England has got problems, all the countries has got problems, but somewhere you have to start choosing, you know, which horses you are going to bet on. And we say not a single horse, 
but the multiples. Yes. So, so if you now come to a point that you say, listen, um, uh, I would like to do something external to the United States, then I think we started off very clearly, understand where the growth hub is, then educate yourself in the country, get the, get the know-how, get the, the stats and really make up your own mind and then choose how to diversify across these countries and then I think this is where we as Wealth Migrate can really help uh, people. We've got extensive experience and uh, just don't go it alone. I mean that's the, that's the other message that I was thinking. But I think uh, we've talked enough. Um, I would like to see if there's some specific questions um, from our audience um, that uh, that's burning on everybody's mind. And uh, yeah, let's let's have a let's have a quick look um, at the questions that's coming through. Um, I've got a question here from uh, Carlos. Um, hi, Carlos. I see. Uh, is the financing more favourable? Uh, than 12% or 9% previously. Carlos, uh, I, if I understand you correctly, um, the approach that we're taking um, with this is that when we deal with the commercial real estate, um, we can actually get the, the local partner, which we call a sponsor, to actually take the debt um, guarantee on our behalf and as a result of it, it's an American that does it as opposed on the residential side where you as a as a direct investor uh, invest and seen as a foreigner and therefore the interest rates that we achieve is around 5%, 5.3 at the moment. Um, our medical um, 7 deal that's currently open for investment is sitting at 5.3% um, fixed interest rate over 30 years. So that basically means that um, we're harnessing the power of our partner to get a more efficient um, uh, returns for us and, and that's I think the, the key differential at the moment um, between the commercial side of things and the residential side of things. In terms of the existing um, residential financial packages at the moment is the 12 to 9 percent is pretty much still status quo. Um, we actually found that since Trump has came in um, that we actually have a more stringent policy towards me as foreign investors. So from that perspective it will definitely get a little bit harder. Um, they definitely are very focused on making America great. I think all of you heard the slogan now quite a few times. Um, we were there during the elections and it was a key, key point. So from our perspective, we have to understand that um, working with a local partner, ensuring that um, we contribute to the local economy helps and as a result of that we get the favorable return. So I hope, I hope that's the one question. Um, then I've seen there's another question um, that's come up. Um, it's not so obvious um, what, uh, what sectors is um, really um, showing good growth in the United States. So really, I think um, maybe allude to us, uh, you've done extensive research, um, uh, maybe the, the one or two reports that you got, you know, which sectors um, have you found from our research really makes sense from a segment in the commercial space. We're not shooting down the residential side, but you know, we've just found that um, commercial real estate um, really is powerful to look at. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the, 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 there's two two um, main sectors that, uh, that that we're not only just following, but that is uh, that is consistently um, being outperforming the other sectors. If we uh, uh, the, the, the number one according to the DLA Piper report, that that sort of a market report that, that takes in, uh, uh, questions from from all walks of life, if you want to call it that, experts in the market, they rate uh, um, the performance and uh, sort of uh, take a view uh, during the course of the year uh, and medical real estate is the number one, it's been the number one for the last uh, three years and uh, the, the, the other um, sector is multifamily, that's also been uh, second for the past three years and actually interesting enough, a couple of years ago it was actually number one, um, and uh, but um, yeah. So these two, two are. Uh, I think it's it's closely knit. 
Um, I think the, 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 the other sectors that, uh, that's also quite attractive um, is, is also self-storage uh, that, that, that we know of, but medical, medical real estate is still outperforming, mainly due to the fact that it's um, doctors that don't want to move and, um, and because of uh, the, the population growth happening, um, the, um, the fact that in, in the US specific, they, they've got um, financial incentives. Uh, we know there's a lot of Obamacare issues uh, where the affordable acts probably going to be rolled back. But if you consider 80% of the population is already, uh, it has got some sort of uh, medical aid, which effectively means that doctor is not going to move because he's getting paid. And uh, that's why it makes it such an attractive sector. Yeah, I think um, what uh, what will be very interesting, really, maybe just as another point, is that uh, medical malpractice insurance in Texas yes. is, is capped. That basically means that the doctor doesn't have to spend so much of his income on his insurance to protect yes. him. So I think that's the other thing. And then I think from our last research um, that you've done so extensively on the, the millenniums, is that we found that um, very specifically this uh, this guy has got a lot of money. I mean, we're talking about 25 to 35 top of guys, and yeah, you know, we've seen a very interesting statistics that um, the home ownership actually dropped. Maybe just yes, comment on yes, that. What uh, you found? Yeah, interesting enough. If I, if, if I look at uh, um, my, my dad uh, and, 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 and his, uh, his uh, brothers and sisters, they they uh, they're in the age bracket of 60, 70 plus, which means uh, they all own a property and they they have been advocating me to own a property. That stat was around 76 percent in the US. That has actually dropped in the last uh, the last couple of decades down to 46 percent. And, uh, and, and the main thing is, is, is because of the fact that, um, that the multifamily is such an attractive building. You've got a, you've got one bedroom, two bedroom, three room. It's, it's, it's like a, 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 a similar in South Africa, they, they, we call it townhouses. It's like an estate, but you rent it and it's got all your amenities there and it's close by. And that's the movement that the guys are actually looking for, the millennials, is they want to be close to, to where the action is happening. and. Uh, being that, uh, given that, uh, you can't really afford those problems. All right, so um, I think the other questions that we got um, is a little bit related to our specific project. So I just want to highlight we're busy with um, the raise on our SGE medical property um, in MacArthur. And for those that um, don't know exactly where it is, um, it's specifically um, in Texas and very specifically in next to the Dallas Fourth Worth Airport. Yeah. Um, really, I think it's now the fourth busiest airport in the world. Yes, um, no, something that, like that. That is true. It's uh, 174,000 people fly out of Dallas Fort Worth uh, Airport every day. Um, yeah, so it's it's um, the, the the property is well located. Um, it's in a stable uh, stable uh, area. Um, the closing date uh, is the 20th um, uh, next week, um, so uh, those of you uh, that's, that's interested, uh, um, get your money moving, um, as it's going to close pretty soon. Uh, 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 I don't know, uh, is there anything else? I've had the, I think the multifamily is rich. Yeah, like so, yeah, just to come, yeah, just to come back to the, I, I think the two things that we really wanted to achieve um, the last um, basically, yeah, was to get uh, deals into Texas. Yeah. I think really um, at the Wealth Migrate team, we have been fortunate to have these partners now, yeah. and we got that going. So, I think um, from our strategic thinking perspective, I think it was clear tonight that you know we are, we definitely want to be present in Texas, where our land rights are protected, and we also want to be in the southeast um, of the United States. So that's that's our current uh, focus. Um, we've got a year also question a little bit of what's coming on our side. Really I think um, it um, sometimes a little bit boring. It's the same old, same old, but uh, the, the, the recipe and the results that we've achieved so far has been fantastic. We consistently actually met our returns and uh, exceeded it. So uh, the guiding principle is we definitely would like to look at um, medical 
um, office block, uh, medical office buildings, and we want to look at the multifamily space and potentially look at the self-storage stage. Um, we are planning to be in the United States um, early in April, um, so we'll uh, be active and vocal on our digital bias um, group. So for those that don't know it, um, maybe just give the, the investment consultants a quick call. I'm just going to put them up here again. Um, make contact with JP and Jock. Um, they would help to get on. Uh, we're going to be in um, the United States. Um, so yeah, there's a question what's coming next. Uh, we definitely are planning uh, a medical aid. Um, we are also planning additional multifamily projects. So from the United States, there's a lot of activity happening. And uh, yeah, um, be assured that um, we're going to follow these principles. Um, we're also um, looking very carefully at the state of the U.S. economy. And uh, I think just rest assured that um, we've been ultra conservative with our investments. Um, so from that perspective, um, we've basically um, have taken an approach where, you know, we are conservative by capping the interest rate, lowering the gearing ratio, so that, you know, we have safe investments. So uh, the best place to, to really look at um, what we're doing next is we also developed a feature on our website, which is called Coming Soon. Um, so that is a very nice feature that gives a little bit of a sneak preview of what we're working on yeah. and um, that will help you as an investor to also understand what's coming and what we're doing. Obviously it's a bit of a balance between um, what we can show and not show. Uh, we've got very clear and strict um, compliance rules and also you know, it's also fair that um, we can't divulge a deal on our platform if we haven't got in principle agreement with the property partner that we can do it. Yes. Um, we have some interesting um, uh, stories to tell about that. Uh, maybe if you want to come and meet us, um, we're going to be in uh, Pretoria, Johannesburg, um, Cape Town and Durban. Um, we're going to be on the 16th, which is um, this coming Thursday. That's right coming in Johannesburg and we're going to be in Pretoria on the 17th which is Friday yes. and then uh, yeah, just help me out, um, we're also going to be in Durban and Cape Town, I think it's the 22nd and the 23rd if I'm not mistaken. So from that perspective, um, uh, please come and join us and come say hello if you're in the area. For those of, of your international um, uh, investors that's on this presentation. Um, we've got quite a few investors right across the globe at the moment. Uh, we, last time we counted was uh, at least 80 countries that's been looking at our website. So we're fully online um, so we don't actually mind uh, cross time zones to talk to you. Um, please email the consultants as you said or just go on our website. There's enough place where you can give us feedback and ask questions and yeah, really get in touch with us. Um, we really like to share and help you build your freedom. And uh, yeah, we we basically saying to you, we are making your financial freedom very simple. And uh, please try our website out. Give us some feedback, and also give us some feedback on the types of deals that you would like to see. Um, and then watch this space. Uh, we are definitely going to start making some real noise in South Africa. Um, please watch the space for March. Uh, we're very, very excited um, to, to start talking about investments also in South Africa. And then true to our principles, you know, to give you um, locations to diversify in. Yeah. And uh, if that's your preference, then that's the choice that you as an investor make. We're not going to make that hard choice for you. So, uh, yeah, I think really that's pretty much it. Um, yes. I'm just going to check around on the, on the, the website quickly if we, if we missed um, anything. Um, oh, yeah, I see one more question here. Um, how, how has the existing medical projects performed to date and um, been on the spot so far? Yes, I think um, I can say that we've predicted pretty much um, Typically, medical one or OCUL as we know it, uh, we projected uh, 8.3. We came in 8.3 last year. We came in 8.8. .8. 
Medical 2, we predicted around 11%. We're actually at 11.4% at the moment. Uh, medical 3, we predicted 8.3. We're hitting 8.3. Uh, we uh, Medical 5, we talked about 8.3 and we're hitting 8.3. Cyprus, um, we just had the first closing. Um, we predicted around about 7.4 and, and that came in as well. That's right. So, yeah, so from, from that perspective, um, we've been really, as I call it, a steady eddy. We want to make sure that these things really work and uh, in line with our theme tonight, we want to make sure that we really protect it. So yeah, I think, um, um, Vili, I just want to check, is there any other specific um, questions that I missed out here? All right, no, I think that's it. Um, thank you very much for yeah. your attendance. Yeah, thank you. And um, yeah, watch this space and come and say hello to us if you can. If you're not in the country, give us a, a buzz. We love to do um, call into Skype. We call it Zoom, and uh, we like to interact with you and, and give us feedback. We really, really enjoy that and thrive on it. And uh, a lot of our investors have given so valuable feedback in the last years. We actually changed a lot of things. So me and Willie normally gets it um, from our sales guys and our website. So, um, yeah, give us feedback and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, so it's thank, been, been our pleasure. Yes, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Michiel. I think it was uh, insightful. I hope it helped, uh, help, uh, uh, helped the, the, the guys up, uh, and the ladies on the, on the other side. And, uh, yeah, we're looking forward uh, um, to, um, to your attendance uh, with, uh, with our next webinar. And, yeah, and like Michiel said, um, go to wealthmigrate.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I may say this, but I'm, I'm going to say it. Look out next week. There's a lot of things going to happen. Go to the website, register, don't miss it out. Have a good evening. Ciao.